Howdy guys. So in this video I'm going to go over how to use the ordered menu and the type properties for HDAs that you might create as well as some pretty simple uh, expressions to help create some random shapes. Uh, so let's get started. So I'm going to start off and make a geometry node and I'm going to make a circle. Uh, we're going to put this on the ZX plane. So what I'm going to do for this simple HDA uh, to show off ordered menus is let's say we have a bunch of different shapes. Uh, so I got a couple of these guys. And I want to be able to switch uh, between them all. Well, we've already covered how we can add a relative reference from our type properties to switch between our different inputs to our switch node. But sometimes when you're creating tools like this for other people or even yourself, uh, it's nice to be able to see the name of which input you're getting. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you uh, Houdini's answer to that problem which is the ordered menus. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, let's start making some different shapes here to go through. So let's start with this first circle. And I'm going to go ahead and make a group. Um, first off, let's actually turn this into a polygon. Um, let's give it five edges because we're going to make a star. So on this group, uh, we're going to select edges. Uh, I'm going to call this edges. And then we'll add a poly extrude. And uh, on this poly extrude, we're going to have it group our edges and we're going to group uh, extrude by individual elements. And we'll increase this out to to get a point, uh, 1.8, that'll work. And then I'll just add a null down here. Um, let's get a different shape and I'll just call this star shape. yellow. All right. Cool. So now we've got a simple star shape. And our normals are going the wrong way. So let's go ahead and just add a quick reverse node there. Yep. That's nice. All right. Um, and then our circle. Um, you know what? We might as well need a circle. So let's just make that a circle. Uh, let's probably make these all the same size. So we'll just scale this up till it's about... There looks like 2.6. That's good. Um, and then we'll call this circle shape. And uh, we're probably going to need to reverse this guy as well. So we'll add another null. Call this guy circle shape and then go ahead and make him that and then we'll go to this circle and this one will be a square so we'll just take this existing circle that we have and divide it by four uh, we'll go ahead and scale this up by what was it 2.6 yeah and then we'll I don't like how it's on the angle right here so I'm just gonna rotate its arc angle by 45 degrees um, Looks like we can actually make this guy bigger. 2.5, 2 2.6. 2 oh, that looks fine. Three seven. All right. Okay. So now we've got a. And again, we're going to have to add. I'll just go ahead and copy these guys. That there. And this guy will be the square shape. And then over here, I actually want this to be a random shape. So to do that, I'm actually going to have to write some expressions and play with the mountain node. So uh, let's go ahead and first uh, scale this guy up to the same 
distance as the other guys, and so that was 2.6. And then we're going to go ahead and make him a polygon. And um, divisions doesn't really matter right now, because I think I'm going to randomize that later. So let's go ahead and add a mountain sop. Um, so what a mountain sop does is generates uh, noise for an asset, uh, or an input that we have. So we can see as this changes, um, I can modify the height and the element size to get random changes in our Y offset. Um, it modifies this offset based off of the point normals. So you see as I put these in here, uh, it's going off of the vertical Y direction because that's the direction that the point normals are facing. So if we simply change our point normals to face outward from our, the center of our circle, then our noise will affect, we'll go into a random direction, we'll go into a random direction based off of the outward normals. So we can change that with adding a simple point node. And we're just going to add a new normal attribute. And this is almost it, but we're getting like random directions. So instead of the self expression, we're just going to have it go through the uh, uh, primitive. So now we've added um, a new, oh, we've updated the normals to point outward from our circle. And now our mountain sop will randomly, as we increase the height and element size, we get this nice random shape here. So what I'd like to do is be able to make uh, a seed that controls these values, uh, maybe some scale and probably the number of divisions of our random shape. So to do that, um, let's go ahead and make this an HDA so that we can start working with this, uh, have a seed to start working with our random function on. So I'm going to call this shapes and subnet this, uh, we'll call this shapes again and make a digital asset shapes and shapes and then we'll go up to our 284 and I'm just going to call this shapes.hda and and then let's go ahead and clean up some of these spare parameters all right so what I want to do here is add a new float and we're just going to call this seed uh, and seed and we're going to give it a range of 0 to 1 um, doesn't really matter but this is already plenty of iter uh, variations for us to mess with here I'll just make its default 0.5 and then we'll hit apply and accept alright so now I'm going to copy my seed value and I'm actually going to split this pane to make this easier to see and then we'll dive down into here and go back to my circle node and start writing an expression in here. And we're going to do um, fit 0, 1 uh, because our seed is arranged from 0 to 1. And what this will do is take our um, input value and rescale that input value to uh, a new defined range, which we will define as our new min and new max for that relative range. Um, this is really useful when working with circles or other geometry, um, or in this case, um, trying to create a random number between two other values. So to create our random number, we're just going to use the rand function. And then we'll make this rand based off of our seed variable. So just grab seed. And then our min and um, then our min and max values. Um, for this, I'm just going to do 10 and 20, and we'll hit apply. And now uh, you'll see our divisions is 11. And as I move my seed value, we'll get a random number of divisions between 10 and 20 based off of our seed number. So this is already kind of random, but we can make it a lot more random. So let's go now into our mountain node. 
Um, and I'm actually going to copy this expression so I don't have to type all of it again. And I'm going to paste this. And our mountain height, um, we're actually, that. yep, that changes a lot. So we're going to want this to be a lot smaller values. Let's say 1 and 4 based on our seed. That's working out. But it still kind of looks like it's a circle most of the time. So let's also randomize the element size. And we'll do this. Element size is needs to be pretty small, so we can do this at 0 0.1 and 1. And then our element size is going to start getting some weird shapes. Pretty good. Yeah, that's 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 pretty random. And this will work out um, pretty nice. We can clean this up a little bit, um, add some more variation, and modify our x and uh, z scales as well. We don't want to modify y, obviously, because we're trying to create. Uh, flat shapes. And we'll do this again for the Z. Um, we'll do this from 1 to, let's say, 3. Alright, that's some pretty good random shapes right there. Cool. So, now that we've got our random shapes, we can go ahead and start taking a look at our um, setting the parameter to switch between these different shapes. Let's go ahead and add this null offset or no null input. I'm just going to call this random shape. Alright, so let's go back up to our HDA and let, take a look at our type properties. So for this, uh, we're going to go and grab the um, ordered menu parameter and drag it over here. And we're just going to call this shape type and shape. And we'll go ahead and hit apply and we'll get this uh, type of drop down menu type parameter. And from here we can go to the menu tab. Uh, this is the third tab over on the parameter description. And we're going to start modifying and adding some menu items. So the token is the number or the switch input that we would read into our uh, switch operator. So this number here. And the label is how it will appear in our drop-down menu here. So our uh, zero, zeroth input is our star shape. Our next one is our circle. Then we have a square. And then our fourth is random. So we'll hit apply and accept. And then now you'll see we have a drop down menu with all of our options. So we can copy this parameter and uh, paste that relative reference into our input. And now we'll be able to select exactly the shape or parameter that we want based off of our name.